I want to talk to you about, we want to talk about the fight week and everything that sure. happened this week. Um, uh, anyway, uh, massive oh. performance against the Palace. Yeah. Tell, tell us what you thought about that fight. Well, fascinating, you know, and Topalos came to fight, didn't he? he? Yes. He didn't come to just show up to I try and- Told everybody that. Make a payday, right? Yeah. And, and you're correct. You know, it in a way is a special person, right? Mm -hmm. A special fighter. He's amazing. And um, uh, I think the fact that he, he Topalos came to fight and made it as good a fight as he can make it created more excitement. Mm -hmm. And the, the other fun, the, the other thing is we could forget how Inoue has stepped up in weight, right? Mm -hmm. You know, he's coming up pretty high mm -hmm. for a guy where he started. Mm -hmm. So here he is, a favorite in the fight. Everybody assumes he's going to win. Topolis is a, certainly a good fighter in that weight division. Wasn't the biggest name, but he did get himself a title and won in an upset. So it's easy for us to forget that Inoue has come so far up in weight. But the fact that he can be dominant in a win, even though, as we said, Topalos had a few good moments, is extraordinary uh, to say about Inouye. Because this guy is, he could be a, a generational fighter when you think yeah. about it for the smaller weight class. Yeah. Yeah, that run that Inouye's on is like, what is the ultimate goal? Because he's fighting, the last two fights, the guys came to fight. Uh, was we got Q boy, uh, pretty boy? Well, Fulton, yeah. Fulton, Fulton he came to yeah. fight. Yeah. The guys were starting to come to fight because I've seen a lot of guys get in the ring and they, they knew it was over. Yeah, oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he dominated uh, Fulton, though, yeah, in a way yeah, that nobody yeah. thought he was going to. Let's be Didn't honest, that, that looked like a 50 50 fight, right? Yeah. It looked like a fight that, that, like, when that fight was coming up, you know, people say, oh, what's your prediction? I'm like, well, I don't know, honestly, you know. Uh, I knew that, in a way, was a bigger puncher at lower weight classes. Mm -hmm. Fulton's not a monstrous puncher at mm -hmm. 122, but would how would that play out? But he just completely dominated the fight. And mm -hmm. that's what I'm saying. Going into fights, that was we on paper we thought it was 50-50. When that's over, what 80-20? Yeah, he dominated the fight. Oh, 100 percent. What's yeah. what's the goal for this guy? I would say right now we have three, and I want to stay on NUA, but okay. I feel like we have three generational fighters yeah. right now. Name them. I think right now the generational fighters that we have that are just well anyway you in your you in your way because you in his way <laughs> yeah it ain't happening yeah, with exactly them. yeah at 122 126 that's gonna be, I don't know if people are gonna be at 122 I think I'm not one, sure anybody's gonna be not at 122 there. you in the way at 126. Yeah. You uh, in the way. I, yeah, 130, 130, 130, 130. So now we get to 130. Tricky. He's gone up so high. Sure. That there might be somebody. But like, for instance, I look at maybe, at uh, you know, we get to 126, guys like Brandon Figueroa are very good fighters. Yeah. But hey, look what he just did to Fulton. Mm -hmm. and, and Fulton and Figueroa were evenly yeah, matched, yeah. perfectly yeah. evenly matched. Yeah. So, you know, you You wonder. look at him at 30 years old and, he, and, he, and he's fighting at 122. He's probably right where he That's probably could the limit. be. As a yeah. man, but yeah, no telling how much weight he's losing to get to one twenty. That's right. Yeah. So he could be losing. He could be fighting in that one twenty six yeah. and now growing into one twenty six. Yeah. So you saying I, he could be even stronger? Absolutely. Could be. Super it, awesome. I mean, everybody. Everybody's different. Yeah. Everybody, you know, yeah. they have their strength and conditioning programs. I mean, the, the so on and so forth. The sixty-four thousand dollar question is, what's the top? Right? What's the limit yeah. for him? Where, sure. Where does he go to that he? You know, but certainly you can you can look at him and say 126 is probably okay for him, right? Yeah, maybe yeah. we start to get to 130, maybe he ask questions. Yeah. But then again, uh, you know, at 130 now, in the, the way the division is is fixed, there aren't a ton of monstrous punchers there. There's some very good fighters. Really good fighters, really good boxers. There aren't, and bigger guys. And bigger guys, yeah. right. I mean, they're very good, yeah. certainly. And and what is too big for him? There are some sure. good fighters at 130, sure. there's no question. And it would be interesting to see him against some of them. So when you talk about a generational fighter, yeah. from my perspective, uh, you know what? Give me your perspective of what a generational, what you consider I a generational. I think it's somebody that we look at them and they've accomplished something so remarkable that yeah. you say at the when you get two-thirds of the way into their career like we are with him, you're like, yeah. Oh my, we're going to look back at this and yeah. say, how did this guy did it? Do it, right? That's kind of what generational is for me because you, you're like, oh my, you know, it, it, truly extraordinary. And he's definitely, he's definitely one of them. And that, that's the way I look at it. You know, yeah. you, you say, 
this was an extraordinary thing that he did, and he did it in a bunch of different ways. And for me, I go into the X's and O's perspective yeah. of it. Well, how good are I, they, in fact, in the ring? Yeah. And I say what makes you a generational fighter yes. is when you can just figure it out against whoever it is the, in front Good of you. point. That's the second part of it. Yes, yep. I agree. When you and can that just figure is it often out. what leads to the accomplishments, right? Yeah. <laughs> of course. And so yeah. I just think that he's he's a generational yeah. fighter. There's, that there's not very many who's going to be able to stand in his way That's right. and, and, and be able to stand up to yeah. what NUA has. Who's the two others? Um, the two others, from my personal perspective, yeah. right now, Tank Davis. Yeah. I think that he can box better than most people mm -hmm. remember or realize because yeah. he has really just kind of moved away from the, the, right. the orthodox speed and, and movement that he has used over the years and has become more of a, I'm going to wait on that great blow. Mm -hmm. I'm going to throw it when the yeah. time is right. He's still got that eye, you know? Yeah. The other, I, I, I think um, Shakur could be moving into mm -hmm. becoming a generational mm -hmm. fighter. They have to fight. Yeah. And, well, then that's we'll, the thing. and then we'll find out, you right. know, if either of them truly were a generational fighter right. or was it just the opposition. But right now, from my, from mm. where I'm looking at Just Chance when you look at them in the ring, you say that could be... Yeah, and they're a perfect yeah. example, don't you think, of we're, for us to be able to look back and say that we're going to have to have us... Now, Stevenson is younger or yeah. is, you know, and, and his... Uh, not as far along in his career sure. as Davis is, but sure. Davis certainly has years left on you sure. know his prime. Sure. But can they get the number of important fights that are necessary to be called generational? Mm. That's the issue. Mm. Um, I'm sure they both want to. Mm. It's just a question of making that happen. So you, and fighting each other, of course, would go a long way to I was going to ask, you think the belts and the number of wins and, of course, the opposition that also defines you defines you being a generational I fighter. think so don't yeah. you think because if you don't have those points to fight to point to it's like in a way it's a perfect example while not all of his opponents have been to all American fans like the most famous people they were all really really good yes. I mean really that he <laughs> yes. fought every good person in every weight class that he could fight yes. and some were great right yeah, yeah. and so that's the that's the thing. I think you need to have that if you're going to be thought of that way. So day of reckoning. Um, I got one more thing for England. Okay, go ahead. Because I was watching him box, and, mm -hmm. and people have been talking about him for so long, yeah. and I just haven't really had the opportunities. Yeah. I'm really not one to just sit down and watch. Yeah, every fight that is I'm, there. Yeah. Well, beyond that, if I missed it. I'm not one to go to back go to YouTube. Go back, yeah, and find it. I'm and a lot of his go... fights are like that yeah, because they're yeah. not as available Two, to us. Two, three either. in the morning. So running into Marlon Tapales, yeah. I was also a little emotionally connected to that fight. Yes. Emotionally connected to anyway because I just had I've right. never seen him. Yeah. So I finally took time to watch him, and I'm like, his style is very. There's I can see the gift that he has mm -hmm. with his style, that yeah. that timing, that rhythm the cadence that he has in his mind to pick up his fighter's rhythm and yeah. their timing and just offset it. And that, when you said a generational fighter, I was already thinking that because mm -hmm. I was watching him and I was like, nobody else does this. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And you combine that with the power aspect yeah. because he is so powerful yeah. and seems to carry all his power yeah. up in every, yeah. every weight class. Yeah. But I agree. Uh, I mean, really, he is, when you look at him, and, you know, you go back to these these fights like the Fulton fight, uh, the Donaire fights. Nonito Donaire, who I know you admire as I do, sure. came up with the first fight against Inoue. You can make the case that for all the great things that Nonito Donaire has done in his career, even at an earlier stage when he was totally in his prime, yeah. that one night might be his greatest achievement even in losing. <laughs> because... He was facing this monster, yeah. monster at an advanced age yeah. Yeah. and came up with the most astonishing performance and the gutsiest performance ever. Mm -hmm. And and then so, may, which made some people think, oh, if this guy that's older and not right at his prime could even hang in there within a way, well, is that a mark against him? Well, it turned out it really wasn't because Donair still had good fights after yeah. that and yeah. then he lost in a way. Yeah. But, uh, you know, so... Those the fights that he has are are remarkable, yeah. and you're right about that. People that that wonder about skill level because somebody scores knockouts all the time. This is a very skilled fighter. Very skillful fighter. Yeah. Very skillful. I mean, this this fight took ten rounds, and for ten rounds, I mean, he just yeah. 
he's not missing the mark. And I, no. I, I just, I always say it's hard to be 100%. And you know he just he shoots as close to hundred percent as you can. He's go. really close. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah. I agree. There's really almost close. nothing that you could look at and say, "Wow, uh, you know, uh, what is he? Is he even in even in these fights? Like the No Air fight was one of the few, and it, of course he won it, you know, by a fair amount. But the few where there was even question and danger, you know. So yeah. he's just. It's going to be interesting to see, you know. Who he fights next, he's going to fight Lewis Neri probably now in a a mandatory. Neri's a good fighter, Mm -hmm. but, you know, do we really think Lewis Neri's going to beat him? And Neri was just in a great fight. He's a really good fighter. Figueroa knocked him out, though. I, I just hard to imagine, mm-hmm. uh, you know, him beating in a way. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, you keep bringing up the name. I want to see the Figueroa fight. That's two classes. I think that up. would be a fun mm-hmm. fight. I think that's a, Styles makes fights. Styles make fights, and that would be great. The question is going to be, uh, Figueroa will not back down, right? Brandon Figueroa will not back how down. How much can he take? Do, will he be able to? We'll really find out about Inoue's power because Figueroa has a great chin, mm-hmm. uh, and the swarming style of Figueroa could give Inoue some problems. I'd love to see that fight. Sure. I, yeah. Again, in a way, would be the favorite in it, yeah, probably yeah. even at 126. It but would be, it'd be a good fight at 130 because he's moved up to 130. Oh, he moved right? up to 130. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, so, okay. yeah. So yeah. could happen. Um, it that's could a, maybe. A, yeah, 